All right, all right, all right, all right. Tour to talk, tour to talk, tour. Yeah, we in here, man. We in here. We in here. We in here. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Everybody, come on in, man. Come on in. Look, man. So today's a actually uh actually a pretty good day. Um, cause we all we all uh falling back in line. We falling back in line. Some people falling in line. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the company, man. You know what I'm saying? I will uh I will pin him in this. Shout out to the company, man. Um, getting with the dirt right. You know what I'm saying? He had to give him the smackdown for him to come back to reality because there's a lot of things that he said that he don't understand that uh just ain't right. It just ain't right. It just ain't right. You know what I'm saying? So look, um, we're gonna watch the comp we're gonna watch the uh what's the dirt's apology to the company, man. And I'm gonna go through it. And if I disagree with certain things he said, even though it's an apology, I'm gonna go through it. But we're gonna listen to this together. You know what I'm saying? And um, this is the 12 o'clock show. Matter of fact, you know what? You know what? I'm going to release this right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting this out right now. I'll do another show for the 12 o'clock show. This has to come out at ASAP. So this is a noun show. You know what I'm saying? So before I get into that, I got to my spill. This is Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. All the single, sexy, beautiful ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas. Y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. You know what I'm saying, baby? Let's get in there, man. Listen, I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. Absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen. Cash at PayPal. It's in the description. They called me the Hidden Gym. 1,300 subscribers. Now I'm over 10,000. About to be 11,000 soon. And a million by Monday morning. You know how it goes, nigga. So look. Uh, hey, let me know where you're from, so. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. So let's get it, man. We're going we're gonna to watch this apology. We're going to do this thing. All right, man. I'll be back. Let's go. All right, man. So let's go. <laughs> okay, guys. So this, this what I'm about to do right now on the channel is completely something I've never done before. Something I've never wanted to have done. Something I've feared personally that I would have to do. Um... And I'll get into why I feared this, but most of you guys aren't even going to know what I'm talking about right now. First off, most of my subscribers aren't even privy to what I'm about to say, but it's important that I do it here on YouTube. I got an apology to make to someone. I got an apology to make to the culture more than anything of hip hop. Um, okay, so... Um I gotta see how far this goes. Oh, I'm gonna see how far it goes, but I gotta see, you know, because so far, so far he sounds very sincere. You know what I mean? He sounds like he's sincere, but for some people, I think that when they get called to the carpet and they get put on blast and they look at this, like once you hear hold a mirror up to them, then they reflection kind of scares them. Like it's like Dracula, you know what I'm saying? Even though Dracula don't have a reflection, but. You know, if you see, it's like if you see the monster inside of you, basically that's what the company man did to What's the Dirt. He he basically showed him the monster that he is. And not to say he's a monster like he goes around and, and, and hurting people, but when, when, you, when you get called out like that, it's he, he like the company man, what the company man did, he kind of did like, he kind of did like what Drake did, what uh, Kendrick did to Drake. He put him in a position where, he made him look at himself, but at the same time, he has no choice but to respect it because everything that Worcester Dirt did in this whole situation, for this video in particular, we ain't talking about his other videos, this one, he was very, he was very tone deaf in this, in this one. And he, and to me, he made it seem like he had the right to say anything and everything that he wanted. But see, the thing is, when you're talking about this, is what you got to understand. He sound like he's uh, he sound like he's Irish, right? I, I'm thinking he's Irish. He sound like he's Irish, but he, he definitely does sound like he from um, uh, he's from uh, Boston. But he sounds like he's Irish. Let's just say for argument's sake, he's Irish. I don't know. But let's just say he is. And I was to tell him how to, uh, if I was to, if I was to disrespect the Irish culture, 
by saying uh, something about, I don't know, whatever the, the Irish culture is. They, they know everybody associates leprechauns with the Irish or something like that, right? Let's just say I, I disrespect that. Or I said, yeah, you ain't a real leprechaun if you don't wear green on this day. And you know what I'm saying? If I did something like that, I'm sure he would take offense to that and say, you really don't know what you're talking about. You're not Irish. You don't know how it works. You know what I'm saying? You don't, the, the, stupid, the stereotypical things you don't know. So, by him saying, calling out the whole nigga thing, he said 37 times. I think he didn't understand that. That's 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 much more than you just saying. It's actually worse than you saying the word nigga because now you're 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 trying to tie it to black culture as if that word didn't have a lot of meaning that held us down. I mean, yeah, we took it and we made it into our own. Cause that's what black people do for the most part. But, um, when the way you, the way he, the way what's the dirt did this whole thing, I kind of felt like he, I kind of felt like he didn't know how important that moment was. And he just basically threw it out there as if it was nothing and nobody would care. So that makes sense. I know I was all over the place, but. I have a lot of things going on in my head at one time when it comes to this. So let's keep going. So for those that don't know what I'm talking about, I'll try my best to lay out a storyline so you can understand. So I dropped the Family Matters video breakdown four or five days ago. It didn't get a very good reception. People were angry. People didn't like it. And from there, you know, not only was I seeing this in the comments or on Twitter, I was seeing it everywhere. I was getting a lot of hate. Now, now, okay, so I want to say this. A lot of people didn't like the video. Uh, they didn't. It wasn't that they didn't like the video. A lot of people, from what I seen, they didn't like your personal feelings about it. Because I think that if you would have just kept it, what you thought that Drake meant by a lot of things, instead of making jokes, instead of saying, "Oh, well, this is it. Are you guys a Messiah?" I don't understand why, and just making up things, and you preface it by saying, "Well." Uh, I just want to let y'all know it's possible to like two people at one time. And then you go on this whole, it kind of felt like a smear campaign against Kendrick, even though you say you wasn't people look at that. When you, when you're breaking down stuff from what I, from me, me knowing about breaking down stuff, when you breaking down stuff as a journalist, you don't supposed to give your personal input. You know what I'm saying? Again, you go from a journalist to an activist and you're, and you, and it seemed like you were actively going against Kendrick. That's what the company man was kind of pointing out. So keep it going. From this video, lots of people, lots of creators made videos about it. Um, people were going off on me, right? I was getting it from all angles. One creator in particular also made a video about it, critiquing it. He, his name is Justin Hahn. If you've been in hip hop for a while, you should know who he is. He goes by the company, the company man on YouTube. I'll link his, I'll link his, um, his channel here in the description. He made it just to made a critique video about family matters, right? And this is going to sound kind of fucked up, but Justin is actually someone that I respect. And it's going to, what I'm going to get into later is going to probably confuse you that I would say that, but Justin's an OG journalist in hip hop, right? I Now I will say this, Justin Hutt, before, Justin Hunt, uh, the company man, before the company man actually did the critique of Family Matters, and I think that you didn't notice, well, maybe you did. I don't know. Maybe you did. He gave you a lot of props. I mean, actually, I would go as far as a lot of people, a lot of people gave you props. I, the, the reason why I, how I found how I found you is through academics. I was watching academics, and he posted one of your videos, and I was like, and he started talking about how good your video was. So I said, oh, shit, let me see. And I went, and that's when I went and I checked it out. And I, and I did a couple of reaction and reviews to your videos. So I think that, and you got to understand too. You got to understand, right? The space you're in when it comes to Kendrick and, and Drake, right? The space you're in, Kendrick won. You got to understand, most of your audience that actually go through and watch and listen and learn is probably from Kendrick. It's probably Kendrick fans because Kendrick fans are very curious about everything. I'm not saying Drake fans are not, but they're more Drake fans are more. They're more just 
laid back. They don't really get into the, the whole deep dive stuff because Drake is not a deep guy. So most of the people that went against you are probably Kendrick fans. Now, again, you got to understand the beef what if the fight is over and you're still you're still breaking stuff down after the fight, which is cool, that's cool. But when you do a deep dive against a guy who won the fight already, this is why I say sometimes it's not good to come up with videos later. But when you do a deep dive to a guy who won the fight, now it looked like you were basically saying he lost. Now, I know that you ain't saying that, but people, perception is everything. And people look at things from, from a skewed lens, and especially when it comes to Kendrick, because they already coming into this thinking that you are going to be on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And you was on some bullshit. And some of the things, I'm going to put it to you like this. It was really nothing wrong with your video. It was just things that you should have just kept out personal things but let's keep it going i'm talking so much let's keep it going watch him for a long time and when he finally did he actually made videos about me before he's complimented me in interviews um and when he did compliment me in an interview i was hyped because he's the company man he's justin hunt so i was hyped off that because he's you know when i whenever i would get feedback from anyone in the culture like whether it be Joe Budden or Elliot Wilson or whoever, whenever I get a shout out like that, that meant a lot to me as an outsider because that always told me I've been doing something right. When I get one of these guys acknowledge me, people that I grew up watching and looked up to and then they, they give me a shout out, that was always an amazing feeling for me, um, especially being a white dude from Canada, right? So I always tried to hang my hat on getting little shout outs like that. So when he did when he did shout me out, it felt good. Um, I was always a fan of him. But Justin makes the video about family matters. He makes the video and he has some critiques, right? Being all what was going on around me at the time, what did I do? I didn't take the critiques. I didn't take the critiques. Now I will say this again. Justin Hunt actually did a video before Family Matters and he was saying how he believed this might be um, when you when you posted that John on Twitter before you dropped Family Matters about a month ago, or two months ago, Justin came on and he did a video and he said he basically gave you a warning about going into Family Matters and what's the name? Because you said something on Twitter and then you end up deleting it and then all this stuff. And you were saying Kendrick is not this and Justin Hunt. You were saying basically saying Kendrick is not as he's not a saint like you think he is. And Justin Hunt came in and says, well, that's not you can't go on the Internet and be snooping around thinking that, you know, a person's personal life. You have to basically know that person's personal life. So don't get into all that. Just do your you just do your review. I mean, do your breakdown. That's what he was saying. The first video he released, he said that then um, I believe he did it. He watched the video and he broke down the thing about. The um the uh the, uh, the you saying the n word the nigger word the nigger word the nigger word you know what I'm saying a couple of times and you you ain't say that but you were saying Drake was saying it 37 times that actually makes him black and his whole family on the other side so he broke that down then you did you went on a, a whole rant you went on a whole rant and then he came back and that's when he ethered you you know what I'm saying he ethered you and now you coming back and you apologize and now again. I ain't saying there's anything wrong with you apologizing. I'm just saying, I think you, you didn't see that other part first. And I think you just seen family matters. Cause I believe if you would have seen him kind of warning you about, about that, or maybe you did, I don't know. I didn't see you see that, but maybe you did. And then, well, I'll get into that. Let's keep it going. Cause I'm talking too much. This is, I have a lot to say. I didn't take it like a man. I, I acted like a child and I decided to make a video Completely bashing Justin on Twitter. I took basically what I've worked out in my head is I took all the hate and frustration that I had and I basically singled it all on one person. And he was he was basically the target. He was the everything that I said to him in this video was a reflection of 
all the hate I was getting and I was trying to address pretty much all the hate and direct it on one guy. And I said a lot of stupid shit. Um, a lot of stupid shit. You could see in the video I'm angry. You could see I'm not coming from a place where I'm stable. You could see I'm pissed. I'm name, I'm name calling. I'm calling him an idiot. I'm undermining his intelligence. And this guy is, first off, he's super, he's super fucking smart, but he's very well respected in hip hop. I will say, here's the thing. So with my issue, with my issue with you approaching that whole situation is you did the name calling thing, right? And we all know the company man is, he's very intelligent. You did the name calling thing, but that was just a defense mechanism for you because you felt like you was being disrespected. Now, I won't say that. I'm just being fair. But at the same time, you got to read the room, homeboy. You got to read the room. You know what I'm saying? All this could have been avoided. Even if you had said, you could have had said, I would like to do a, a, a joint, what's the name with the company man, a joint uh, a podcast with him, and we talk about this whole situation, and... I give him my perspective and he gives me his and we can learn from each other. See, if you would have did that, then I wasn't going to say everything would have been fine, but it would have been better. But the one thing you got to understand about black people is this is the thing about black people. And this could be our, our, our detriment, but at the same time, this is our greatest strength. Black people are very good at forgiving people. We might not forget because you got to have both. I ain't going to lie, but we are very good at forgiving people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, a lot of people go through a lot of stuff and black people will forgive them if they feel as though they find it in their heart. Black people are the most forgiving people, at least that I know of. You know what I'm saying? We're the most forgiving people. Some people will say that we shouldn't be, but so let's keep it going. As a journalist, because he's earned that, right? Like I said, it's someone I watched. So when I do this, I don't know what the fuck's going through my head but just sheer frustration and anger. And as I'm making this video, my girl can hear me screaming on the mic. So she comes in and tell me, what are you doing? No, no, do not, do not stop Matt. And I said, no, I'm, I gotta do this. I gotta start, I gotta start clapping back at people. Like I was taking his critiques very personally. Yes, and again, this is what this is what happens when you get consumed by work. And this is what he was saying, like about the hubris thing. Like, I think that you for me, you you see, I don't know you personally, but you seem like you're a good guy. I just think that you are very passionate about what you do. And I don't and, and, I'm, and it's going to sound crazy. I don't think you hate Kendrick. I just think you don't like the fact that he has a lot of loyal supporters. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you you don't know Kendrick to hate him. I think you you don't like the fact that you feel as though you know some things about him and you found some things out about him and people still defend him. And that gets under your skin. But see, that's where you have to understand. You have to break that away because no matter what, when you are a journalist, you can't let that affect your job. I'm sure that there's some journalists who go and they go into uh, war-torn uh, uh, countries and I'm sure at the end of the night, they probably cry. But when they report, they don't report how they feel about it. They report what's going on on the ground. That's what you lack, you know what I'm saying, in this video. Maybe, I, maybe you do in other videos too, but this one you do. And the reason why it's so prevalent, this one is so, 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 so uh, prevalent, is because this is the one that people say Drake won off of. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you was in certain things in there to kind of make it look like Drake had a point. Now, don't get me wrong. Family Matters is, a, is, is cool. I think it's a good song. But you have to understand, when you implement your personal feelings into it, it makes you look bad. And then on top of that, it's a question mark now whether you're going to do Meet the Grams and you're going to do uh, uh, Not Like Us. Because that right there is very important. Because that's when the the when when Kendrick dropped that song, it kind of like felt like Family Matters didn't matter no more. When he dropped Meet the Grams, 
So let's keep it going. And getting back to me respecting them, I think that's why I took it even harder. I think that's why I even took it harder because because I looked up to him. So when he was saying these these things about my content, I think it just hurt that much more coupled with all the other stuff that was going on. But he was and again, I I'm 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 just I'm just trying to play uh your lawyer real quick. Um well, I'm trying to play I don't know if I'm trying to play Justice Hunt's lawyer or your lawyer. I'm just speaking. The thing is, he warned you that this was going to happen. Now, not from him. He warned you that the culture wasn't going to take too kindly of this because Kendrick is the culture. Let's just be clear here. He's not the entire culture, but he's the culture. That's number one. Number two, he only, res he only responded because you said something. Because I almost can guarantee you, if you didn't say anything or call him any names, he probably wouldn't have responded. He probably wouldn't just left it at that. But he only crit he critiqued your work from the kindness of his heart, even though it sound crazy. But he critiqued it from the kindness of his heart, because I think that I think that what Justin Hunt did in that whole situation, the first time when he told you about the whole it's crazy that you would say that he wasn't insulting you. He didn't insult you at all. He just said black people don't just because somebody used the word nigger is not in our blood. It's not in our DNA. And, and you, you, you was for sure that Drake's father's side of the family used the word. That's very disrespectful for you to say. Very disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? That could get you, that could get you deleted. From, some people would really get you out of here. You know what I'm saying? So not to say that that should happen to you because I don't want nothing to happen to you. I'm just saying that that's what it, how passionate people are. How passionate you are about your work is the same way how passionate people are about, about that. And Justin Hunt is very passionate about the word nigga because he said he didn't use it in 20 years. And then you laughed about it. I can tell. That is the problem right there. You didn't read the room and it's like you like, so what is it? So so you're saying you're basically saying that you can tell that he's not a real nigga. That's what you basically was saying by saying that. And you probably didn't even know that because you probably thought it was cute. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I'm not perfect. But I'm telling you guys right now, my response to him was disgusting. It was. I, I can't. I am ashamed of my response to him. But not just am I ashamed of my response to him. I'm even more ashamed of how I I won't say forced him, but he made a response video to me. And for as long as I've been watching this man, he's a kind soul. He's a good he's a good guy. Great guy. For as long as I've been watching him, I don't think I've ever seen him in a lick of drama. Not now, some of you guys might correct me and say that he I've never seen him angry. I've never seen him put anything out but good, honest content. And the video that he made about me today, I think he posted it today, that's what's even more embarrassing for me is that I actually made this very decent human being angry. And 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 I was... The, that's really why it's embarrassing is, is out of all the years he's been doing hip-hop journalism... I'm the guy that made, that made him react this way, which is sickening, really, because that's not something, you know, he's got a legacy. He's got a legacy. And, and another thing, too, um, he respected the hell out of you. I think that because from what Justin Hunt is saying, he's the one that actually created this space. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, he said it, but I don't know if it's true. But I'm just going to say he seems like he's an honest guy, so I'm just going to take his word for it. He said he created this space of breaking down stuff and what you're doing. And not to say that you took from him and started doing your own thing, but he's saying he created it. But he, but even, even though he created it, he respected you and your work. He really respected you. And I think, again, some people get caught up, like Justin Hunt said, in their own hubris, in... They don't understand what they're doing. And sometimes the, the passion 
of something can really blind you. You know, they said love is blind. It's absolutely true. When you truly in love with something or you have true passion about something, you will go to the end of the earth to try to make sure it's, it's what it is. I think, and, and even though we will, we, well, and I say we, but some people will forgive you uh, or accept your apology. I think that that's how you truly felt. You know what I'm saying? Now, maybe you could build back your trust. Who knows? But I think that that's how you truly felt. You know what I'm saying? It's, it is what it is. Not, not to say people should hate you for it, but because I seen people online who was bigging you up even after all this. You got to understand, there's still people in your corner. It's just the honest truth. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm part, I'm that guy. I'm the, I'm the guy that made Justin Hunt react this way, which he's completely deserving of, by the way. Everything he said in his video is valid, 100%. And another thing too, bro, this is another thing that I think that you, you, you don't understand. If you would have had articulated yourself better in the rebuttal, I think that you and him could have had a great debate about this, but what, where, where you lost everybody at is you was disrespecting him, calling him names. Justin Hunt, he, he didn't call you not one name, not one name. He didn't call you one name. You know what I'm saying? He just said you got lost in your own hubris and he said that you 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 calling you using you basically counting niggers from the basement. That's basically it. In an intellectual way, obviously. But for you to for you to 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 if you would have stood on business and articulated yourself and said, okay, this is why I said this, and this is why. But it just sounds like a, a big excuse for Drake being half black that it's okay for him to use the word You know what I'm saying? That was the issue. Nobody has an issue with what's the dirt. I think a lot of people actually love, still love your work, bro. Every, for every, every person that I come across, every video I watch that's about you, the first thing they say is, I still like his work. I still love what he's doing. I just don't like with that. That's it. They didn't like that. So would you know, you know what that means? That they're looking forward to family, um, um, meet the grams. But the way you went about it in this one, it wasn't about people getting mad because you had uh, Drake saying things or breaking down certain things, Drake lyrics. It's just you implemented your personal feelings into the beef. That was it. And Justin Hunt just did what you did. He just critiqued it, that one part because I almost guarantee you if you would have took that part out or never said that part about the 37 nigga thing, probably Justin Hunt probably wouldn't have never said nothing. A hundred percent. I said some things to Justin outside of the video. For example, I called him a Carlton. For those that don't know who that is, that is the character on Fresh Prince. Anyone, anyone that knows, right? Anyone that knows. I do want to preface by saying Justin's video about my family matters. Basically, his main critique. His main critique was that I lack nuance to talk about certain things in hip hop, not just hip hop, but black culture, African. Now, OK. I kind of disagree with that. I don't think it's Justin's place to tell you that. I don't think he I don't think it's his place to tell you that that you don't you lack nuance to actually talk about black culture. I don't think that's true because there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, there's certain, there's certain people that I think that, that are white that he wouldn't say that. Like, he wouldn't say that to Eminem. And I'm just just I'm just being honest. There's nothing against the company, man. Not, I'm just saying. I personally don't think that anybody can tell anybody they can't speak on anything. But I will say, what I will say is, the way you went about it was disrespectful. And you calling him Carlton is 100% disrespectful. Because you're basically saying he's an Oreo. He's a, he's a, uh, he's a wigger. That's basically what you're saying. He's a, a privileged black man. That's what you're saying when you say that. You know what I'm saying? Now, if he's, if, if he's talking, if the company man is talking from that point of view, I can understand why he would say that. But just to actually, just to, uh, just to come out and say that you, you lack nuances and you can't speak on black culture. 
let's just say, for example, I have I have one of my boys. He's white and he grew up in, in, in the hood with me. Yes, absolutely. He could talk about black culture because he'd been in it. He's been in it all the way to the end. You know what I'm saying? All the way to the end. He was in it. So there's some people that you could say that to off, I mean, uh, off the rip. But I don't think that he could say that to you. He could say that to you now because he's seen your point of view of everything when it comes to this. But I can almost guarantee you when you did all those other breakdowns, he never said that to you because he probably felt as though that you that you are a person who could speak on the culture. But then when he said you lack the nuance, that was when you start talking about Drake, this 37 nigga thing and all that stuff. So I can understand why a company man actually said that. But like I said, from the rip, I don't think he was telling you that. But from the rip for me, I can't tell somebody what they can't talk about because you don't know where, where their background's from, where they came from. You know what I'm saying? American culture. He said, I lack that nuance. And whenever anyone would say that to me, I would take it as a huge insult because I looked at it, I looked at it like, I've been listening to hip hop since I was like eight, nine years old. I became obsessed with this when I was a kid, Flip, flicking through magazines. Like I, like I became enamored with this culture from an extremely young age and that just never changed. But it's only now I'm realizing the knowledge of the music is not enough. The knowledge. And again, okay. I understand exactly what you're saying, but you got, you have to understand. Because you listen to hip hop doesn't make you a part of the culture. You know what I'm saying? I put it to you like this. I believe Yellow Wolf is a part of the culture. Yellow Wolf listened to hip hop, but Yellow Wolf was in, in everything. You know what I'm saying? If you go back and look at his history, he was in everything. He was in everything. He was in everything when it comes to the culture. I think where, where, you, where, you, where, you, where you lack at is the fact that you you're not you're not a part of you're not into you're not into the situation i should say you just listen to the situation you you listen to a narrator tell you a story that's what happened and you fell in love with the story but you wasn't in the in the book you know what i'm saying that's that's the thing with you what's the dirt yellow wolf was in the book he was one of the he was inside of the he was a character in the culture you are not a character in the culture you're a character outside of the culture talking about the culture that you're looking at or someone's telling you a story about the culture. That's what you got to understand. Now, I'm not saying that you can never be in the culture because truth be told, in some ways, I know it sounds kind of contradictory, but you are in the culture. You're just not in the culture, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because you're talking about something. But to me, the reason why... uh. I would say people don't consider you a part of the culture is because the way you went about that family matters thing with the 37 nigga thing. Cause you, you would, you were tone deaf about that. So let's keep it going. Knowledge of the music is only one part of it. And because I had this and because I watched all the movies and all the pop cultures, all that stuff, because I had this knowledge, I felt like when someone would say, you don't get it. You don't get that would always offend me. And when I'm getting to the Carlton thing, when I called him that, really what I meant by it, in my mind, was that he's like a straight edge type of dude, and that's it. Not knowing at all how this, the gravity of what that word means or what that represents. I had to have. Now, again. This is this is another this is another stereotypical thing about black people that a lot of people kind of like they they gloss over it, but it's very disrespectful for you to call him a Carlton, right? But black people they disrespect Carltons too because they say the same thing you say. The difference is is we're black, and we can say that because we are black. If if a black person wants to call another black person. A uh, 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 Carlton, it's okay for him to do it because we are black. It's like your family fighting your family. That's what this is. You can't be an outsider 
fighting the family. It don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't agree with the word caring. I don't think black people should call white people caring. I don't. Even though they think it's cool, I don't. Because I think it's a part, it's a slur. It's the same thing with, to me, it's, I don't think it holds as much weight as nigga. Obviously, it don't. But I don't agree with us. I don't, I don't agree with name calling, period. I always agree with dialogue and talking to each other. Even though I know it hurts some people's feelings. It hurts some people's feelings to talk it out. But I believe you're supposed to talk. And I believe that even with all this happening, I believe that you and the company man still can sit down and have a conversation and he could probably school you. And I say school you in a way where I'm not disrespecting you. I say school you on the nuances of things. Not to say you won't be accepted back, not to say you ain't going to be accepted back. But I think that he can teach you something because he's the one that created the space. Now, he could help you. And I don't know if he will help you now, but to me, it seems like he's that type of guy that would extend the olive branch to you. You know what I'm saying? He might even make a, um, a video about it. I don't know. But then again, people like, people like him, when you cross them, they're nice guys, but they whoop your head. You cross them. Like, they turn, they turn on demon time real quick. But even when I posted it, even when I called him Carlton, I didn't understand why I was getting hate. I did not. I was like, what? Like, if I knew it was that bad, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said it. That, but they, basically, they, they call, a friend of there you go right there. That's exactly what he's talking about. Right there. You did all this research about all these things, but you didn't do the research on that. And that's exactly what he's talking about. When it comes to the culture, you don't, you don't have no nuance. You say, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought that it was uh, this. I didn't know. I didn't know. That's the issue right there. Come explain it to me. He's like, bro, you basically just called him like an Uncle Tom. Like, you know, like he's trying to be white. And I'm like, that's not. Now, okay. A lot of people get that, they get that confused. Uncle Tom is not who y'all think he is. It's actually Sambo. And I'm just going to put that out there. And I'm trying to make a big debate about that. But Uncle Tom is the term that they use because they say that. He was like, but Uncle Tom actually wasn't who y'all think he was. It was actually the other guy, Sambo. You know what I'm saying? He was the one that was the, the one. You know what I'm saying? But I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. I'm just putting it out there. So let's go. What I meant at all. He's like, no, I know, but calling someone Carlton in certain circles, that's like fighting words. That was also new to me. I didn't know that. So, But see, and again... It's an insult to call someone Carlton because for some reason, us as black people, right? When we, when, when, I'll put it to you like this. Um, speaking proper is not exclusive to white people. It's not. Speaking proper is not exclusive to white people. Acting proper, showing up on time is not exclusive to white people. But see, we were conditioned to believe that for so many years. This is the reason why it's disrespectful for you to call somebody a Carlton to black people is because we were conditioned to think that if you were like him, you were white. That's what that is. That's just the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? We were conditioned to believe that. Do I agree with that? No, I don't. I do believe it's disrespectful because you didn't know and you said that. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it is what it is. If you're ignorant, doesn't mean that you ain't going to get hit with a charge because you don't know. You're still going to get hit with that charge, nigga. That's how it goes. So I'm thinking that black people are offended by you calling him Carlton, but th th again, it's the family. This is the family, and the family has the right to say whatever we want to each other. And I know you probably don't understand that. You probably look at it like, because you, 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 you don't understand that. Maybe you do now, but you didn't because you, you mentioned that in one of your one of your breakdowns. You said, well, I don't understand how Kendrick gets a pass and Drake doesn't. You know what I'm saying? You said that, but Drake don't get a Drake, Drake gets a pass too. You gotta understand, Drake is a half, he's half, and he still gets a pass on certain things. You know what I'm saying? People still is cool with it. People still laughed when he said, 
And when the mom said, maybe this time you shouldn't start with nigga saying da, 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 and niggas laughed about it. That just goes to show you that he's a part of the family, even though a lot of people don't like him. He's still a part of the family. And now again, we have the right to, to the right to do that because we've been through a lot and that's what it is. But you, Justin Hunt said, you don't have that. You know, you didn't you don't reserve that right. But you probably felt as though you did because you've been doing it for so long. You've been doing the culture for so long. And sometimes people test the waters to see how deep it is. And now you you stepped off the edge and you fell into the ocean because you felt like, well, it might, it might not be that deep. And then Justin was telling you there's sharks in that water and he was one of them. And you fell right into it. Basically, <laughs> Justin's Justin claiming that I lack these nuances for certain parts of the culture. I prove by calling them Carlton. I prove that. Right. That's just one example of it. There's a lot of things I'm realizing now that there's things that I just don't get. And I've never, ever sat here and said, I'm going to get absolutely everything right in my videos. But I think I got really comfortable. I think I got really comfortable talking about black culture. Way too comfortable. Because that's real shit to say. I ain't going to lie. I don't think I ever heard a white person ever say that. I think I, cause that a lot of us say that and a lot of us say that in our head, but we never mention that to white people. That right there is one of the realest things I ever heard a white person ever say. I think I got too comfortable talking about black culture. You got to understand how big that is for him to say that. Now, maybe he don't understand how big it is, but that's a lot to me. Doesn't mean I forgive him. It's just, that's a lot. That's a lot for him to say. Because now he's starting to realize that, well, maybe I was doing a little bit too much. Or maybe I was doing too much. I was getting, when I did like Euphoria in 616, right? I was getting an overwhelming amount of people telling me like, you get it. You you're a white guy that gets it. Like you know you're you're one of us. Like you 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 can come to the cookout, bro. You're there. You're with us. I got my I got my pops cooking up, uh, you know, some food for you right now and stuff. Like lots and lots and lots of that. And I guess I let it get to like get get to my head in a bit where I was thinking I could crack off these little jokes and stuff because they, you know, they've embraced me. Like I, I felt like I was part of this thing, right? It's another thing, too. Like, and I get what he's saying. I ain't going to beat him down for saying part of this thing. But the thing is, when you, when you, they love you when they love you. They hate you when they hate you. I'm just going to put it to you like that. And for every, for every, you got to understand, even though my boy grew up with me, even though he grew up with me and he grew up in the hood, he white, whatever, never said nigga. Not one time because he knows that that is a difference between us split down the line. Totally, totally different. You don't use that word because it's different. You know what I'm saying? I think that when you say you got comfortable, I think you felt as though, like you said, you could get anything, get these things off because it wasn't that big of a deal to you because now you felt like you was a part of the family. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to black, uh, how would I say, black oppression or black people's uh, 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 scars, black scars, you can never be a part of that because you're not black. You don't understand. You don't understand the difficulty, and it's in our DNA. You mean, and people don't believe that, but it's in our DNA. Some of us, some of us had that mentality of that everybody's against us because we've been oppressed for so long. And, and, and again, I'm not trying to get into this back and forth racial thing, but that's why you would never understand how we feel about certain things because you were never put in that situation. If that makes sense, let's keep it going. I'm a guest and I've always said that I'm a guest, which when, like I said, when I got feedback from people like Justin 
that validation was invaluable for me as a creator, a young creator, a guy just coming up. But I made critical, I made a critical mistake by 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 saying the things that I said to that man. He didn't deserve it. He's the last person that deserved it. It is shameful that I did it, but I got to come on here and and air my grievances and and apologize to him. Apologize to him, not first as a man. First as a man, first and foremost. Secondly, as a very respected journalist. And lastly, like I got to apologize to the culture because a lot of people... A lot of people did put a lot of stock in my opinion and stuff, right? Or, or my ability to do research. And I don't want to let anyone down. Like, I don't want to... I, I do this because I really do love it. I'm not happy with the way I responded to Justin. I'm not happy at all with the way that I flew off the handle and there's nothing working in my brain telling me not to do that. And I just... All right, so I want to say this before I can let him finish off. Um, I respect that you apologize. I respect that because, honestly, you didn't have to do that. Honestly, people would have still followed you. They just wouldn't have took you as serious, but people would have still tuned in. And you would have just been some YouTuber who just said this and that's it. It would have just been a controversial moment. It's not like you actually said the word nigga because you didn't. But... When he said lack nuances, that's what he meant. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you did, You need to learn certain things that just, it's not cool to say or do. You know what I'm saying? So people would have still, people would have still probably tuned in to you. That's why I respect you for coming on here saying it. Now, I know a lot of people were saying, well, people probably wouldn't have tuned in. They probably would have turned, nah, people would have still tuned in. He would have tuned in. But going forward, you should understand now how this works. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll just be honest, black people are loving people. Maybe not to each other, but we're loving people to people that's that's outside. That's just how we are. We're loving people. You know what I'm saying? And I think that if I think that if you wouldn't have inter, inter, interjected, interjected, not interjected, interjected your personal feelings into this. Nobody wouldn't, people would have just watched your review and they just, they would just say, oh, when are you doing this? Me personally, what I think you should have did was I think you should have dropped both of them at the same time. Drink, drop one and then the following week. That's what I would have did. And I would have probably, since you had it like this, I would have made it a series. I would have said every Friday, chapter this, chapter that, that's what I did. But that's just, need to hear it. Let's keep going. Threw it all on him. That's been a problem for me. I'm being honest with you guys. That's That's been a problem for me. Um, is one of the things I've talked <clears throat> to my therapist about a lot it was many, many months now. We've had this session of me saying, I fear doing something stupid or flying off the handle and saying something stupid. And I completely destroy this thing. And again, I respect that you are in therapy because most people won't ever say that they're in therapy, that it's a big thing. I used to be in that field. And trust and believe, most people don't go to therapy. They have underlying issues that they need to resolve. And I think that um, you probably have a, a obsession, a compulsive obsession disorder. I don't know if that's you were diagnosed with that, but you probably have that because honestly, I really believe you do because you do this type of stuff. And it's very, very, very difficult to go online and, and constantly. That's obsessive. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with that because that's you you made it work for you. And that's the best thing when you have a, I would say, I ain't gonna say a sickness or a disease, but when you have some type of uh, mental disability, you made your mental disability work for you. Now, I'm not saying that he's actually diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, you know what I'm saying? But some people are, you know what I'm saying? So I feel as though from what I'm seeing, that's what he has. You know what I'm saying? But let's keep it going. I can't count how many times I had that with her. Um, because this is, this is a trend for me. It is. So I don't know how long this has been running, but I do have to apologize to that man. And this ain't damage control. This is me really seriously wanting to apologize. It didn't take long after I posted that 
that I realized I messed up. But again, I was still very fired up. So I, I continued and continued and continued. First, I was just trying to dig myself out of it. Every time I tried to dig myself out of it, I said something even worse. So it is what it is. Like, I'll understand if Justin never, never, ever speaks to me again or understands or even try. Like, I came at him. You know what I mean? It's 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 my fault. Um, I am an outsider in this culture. And one of the tough things about this beef, to be honest with you guys, for me, is yes, I love hip-hop. Yes, I love breaking down bars. Yes, I love everything about this. It's a dream come true. But this beef was very much not racially charged, but culturally charged. And those those little nuances were always always tough for me. It kind of sucks when I got to go to Google um, to try to figure out these things that you can't learn everything from Google. You can't you can't pick up on nuances on Google. You can't. You can't. And that's that's what I lack. Right. And that's where, again, I think if you would have had a conversation with Justin before you even did all this. Because again, he went, he did say something before he did two videos before he did that video. If you would have said something to him before that nine times out of 10, he probably would have schooled you on some things because you are not a small YouTube channel. You're pretty, actually you have more subscribers than him. So you are a pretty big YouTube channel. And I think if you sat down, if he said, listen, if you came to him and said, listen, um, I don't know, I don't know what's really going on. Maybe I say what's going because you did an interview and I watched the whole thing. You did an interview with the Ville. Shout out to the Ville. I'll tag him in this too. You did an interview with the Ville and he kind of told you the same thing. You know what I'm saying? He told you the same thing. And I know you would have did an interview with Justin Hunt because the Ville, the Ville is a small channel like me. He don't have that many subscribers. And you did an interview with him. So I think that you would have you you could have learned something because the Ville, even though the Ville's not Justin Hunt, he was trying to school you to some things too. I would even say that he probably did even more than Justin Hunt when because he talked to you physically, not physically in person, but he talked to you in person through stream. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all go check out that 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 video too. I'm just trying to be a bigger man. Do what's right. Apologize to that man. And I'm probably going to be, I'm definitely going to be taking a break from YouTube. I don't even know if I'm coming back on YouTube, I, to be honest with you. That's not pity. That's the worst thing you can do. That's, that is the last thing you should do. You should not take a break. You already said you're sorry. You got a job to do. Do your job, nigga. Do your job. You got to get to Family Matters. I mean, you got to get to uh, Meet the Grams, and you got to get to 616, and you got to get to The Heart Part 6. I mean, you got to get to uh, uh, Not Like Us. You got to get to The Heart Part 6. Do your job. Don't take no break. There ain't no time for no break. This is what we're here for. Okay, you said some things. You apologize. We either forgive you or if we don't. But you got a job to do. Like you said, you a journalist, right? You got to do your job. Company man got you out of here, but you said sorry. Time to move on. Grab your nut and move on, bro. All this, oh, I don't know if I should. I'm definitely taking, nah, nah, nah. It ain't no time for no break now. We need to see what you say about Meet the Grams. We need to see that breakdown, bro. <laughs> we really do. We want to see that breakdown of Meet the Grams. We want to see that. Because that is a big deal. Coming from you, it's a very big deal. And I'm sure other people would agree. <laughs> so we need to see that. Nah, don't quit now. Ain't no quitting now. Trust and believe, I'll make a whole video talking about, about you, talking about you shouldn't be quitting. I'll go in on you if you quit. Because ain't no way in the world you go and do all this and then get to this point and you fold because people don't like your take on it. Yeah, you said some egregious things and you... You did. We think your opinion was in, but we need to see what you say about this song. We need to see you digging this and go into people's background on this. That's what we need. We need you to highlight this. 
this is a big moment for you actually to be honest with you this right here this right here is a bad a bad moment for you but the next moment is a highlight for you and a big highlight because this is how you can i ain't gonna say redeem yourself but this is how you can basically expose if this stuff is really going on because you said you are a researcher right we need you to research we need you to research them pdf files nigga. that's all i'm saying we need you to research those pdfs you know what i'm saying that's just me saying like you know men mentally or whatever like maybe this is not the best maybe this is not the best place for me to be or the best career for me right unfortunately it seems like it was but i had this fear of doing something stupid and fucking it up and then here we are so bro you can't listen bro let me explain something to you bro and then we're going to get out of here. Because it might seem like it's hard. It might seem like people are saying things. And it is hard. You think it's easy? I sat around and did YouTube. I did YouTube. And I don't have as many subscribers as you. But shout out to who put me up there. Thank you very much for putting my, putting my face on there. Because I'm growing. I was doing this for about five or six years. And my channel wasn't going nowhere. I'm talking about nowhere. I mean, I was so discouraged. I was getting one view in two weeks, three weeks, one view, three views. And I wasn't getting nothing. I'm talking like no views. And out of nowhere, boom. People say, oh, I think I'm so happy I found your channel. Then they start bigging me up. I love my subscribers over here because they with me and they with me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't have to pay for no subscribers. I ain't do none of that. They here because they want to be here. I don't, I don't agree with everything that they say in the comments. They don't agree with everything I say, but they respect me and I respect them. But for you to give up because you got hit over the head one time, you're going to get hit over the head again. Trust to believe because that's just how it is. When you are in this space, people are not going to always agree with you. I'm one of those cycles that jump in the comments and I like to go back and forth in the comments. Some people can't do that. But it just seems to me like you fold under pressure so quickly. You can't fold under pressure so quickly because what you've been doing is actually really good work. And you have to stand on business. You made a hiccup. People in companies, guess what? They make mistakes sometimes, but not everybody stepped down because they made a mistake. They learned from it. You need, you need to learn from your mistake. What did the what did the company man say? You lack nuance. So learn the nuance, nigga. You gotta learn. <laughs> you don't give up. Oh man, I'm giving up. Why? What are you giving up for? We need that. We need that meet the grams, bro. We need that. Sorry. I I'm sorry. I don't I ain't nah. Uh-uh. We need that meet the grams. You ain't gonna just quit. Nah, nah, nah. We need that. You did this uh two hours and and I spent all time watching that. Nah, you need to do three hours of that. And we need to watch that. Because I need to see what you come up with. That's just that. I don't know if I'm coming back. I don't know what, what uh, you know, what I'm going to do. But obviously, I got to take some time, sit down, um, talk to my therapist many, many times about what the fuck just happened. Um, and again... My apologies to Justin, Justin Hunt, company man. I apologize. Um, I did not mean to fire off on you like that. And I didn't mean anything in the video at all. At all. So it is what it is, guys. I did have to do this. I didn't want this to be too long, but um, here we are. So see you sometime. Yeah, man. All that giving up. Sh nah, bro. Uh-uh. That's another thing about black people. We don't give up, bro. We don't give up. We've been through the ringer. If you want to understand the nuance of the culture, then understand black people. We don't give up. So if you're trying to be a part of the culture, you can't give up, bro. That's that. We need to hear that meet the grams. We need to hear it, bro. All that I'm getting. Let me be your therapist. Now I'll get you right. i get your get you. Get, get off your... And do that work, boy. That's how it goes. 
Oh, this I don't know. I, oh, oh man, oh man, I was messed. Yeah, you messed up. Now you move on from it. We we understand you messed up. And to be honest with you, a lot of people ain't as harsh. They're not really that harsh on you. I seen harsher people, harsher sentences on people, easily, worse, much worse than what you got. You can't fold now, cause oh why? Because the company man beat you over the head with a with a combat boot that said he hit you in the head thirty seven times. This boot said nigga on the side. A Tim. You know what I'm saying? Just understand, man. All is giving up now. You want to be a part of the culture? Then you don't give up. That's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a part of what's going on here, because people, you still have a voice. You ain't get shut out. People just didn't like that take. But people still respect your work. I told you. Because whenever I see people, they say, listen, man, I don't like what he said, but I love his work. So you need to take the good with the bad and you apologize, move on with it. Now you learn, you learn. The company man taught you something. He taught you something, nigga. You know what I'm saying? He taught you some of the nuance and now, you know, you can't say that you can't go down that road. Maybe you feel as though you can't uh, be yourself. I don't know. I don't, obviously I don't think you're racist. Not at all. You know what I mean, and that's the big thing. We don't think you're racist. We just think you ignorant. You know what I'm saying? And I think now you know. So talk to your therapist, and hopefully your therapist will push you in the right direction. But for me, if I was your therapist, and you said that you quit now to close the door on you, so I get out of here. Go home and do the next video. You, 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 you dealt with it. You, you apologized, and then that's it. And we'll see what happens with the company, man. I don't know if he accept your apology or not, but even if he don't accept your apology, it's all about you and what you do. That's another thing people got to understand. When you do something, you do it because you want to do it. Don't worry about what the next person feel. So if you want to apologize, you apologize. You be sincere about it. They accept your apology or not. It doesn't matter. You are the one. So when people say, well, why don't you, uh, 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 like say, not me. I don't do this, but if someone says, why don't you cheat on your, 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 your significant other, right? And you say, I don't care what they're doing. I'm the, I'm, I'm the responsible one. I'm going to do what I think is best. And what I think is best is I don't do something like that. I'm responsible enough not to do that. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people don't understand that. So for you, uh, um, for you, what's the dirt? Uh, Matt, I believe that's your name. You have to understand. Don't worry about what everybody else says. If you sincerely mean what you say, say you sorry. You, you, didn't, you didn't mean it that way. Sincerely mean it and you move on from it. and You go to the next video. You don't give up, bro. Don't give up. Shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to the Ville. You know what I mean? Shout out to uh, Company Man. And shout out to uh, What's the Dirt? You know what I'm saying? Those three, to me, had a, had a nice little thing. You know what I mean? And I think that it was that was it was uh, important to hear their voices. You know what I mean? So, you know what it is, man? I'm out of here. See y'all. Peace, bye. <laughs>